Now that you are in a deep trance, we are going to give you a trigger, or reinforce it if you already have it. The trigger phrase is I am a normal Lucario. If you use this trigger phrase, or if someone that you trust uses the trigger phrase you are a normal Lucario, you will undergo the transformation that you are about to experience again at whatever speed you want. Also, you or someone that you trust can add the phrase that doesn't have spikes to the trigger phrase in order to change the effects of the transformation in a way that will be described later. Additionally, you will instantly turn back into a human if you use the reset phrase I am not a Lucario, or if someone that you trust says the reset phrase you are not a Lucario. Now the transformation will begin. First, feel your height quickly changing so that you are only 3 feet and 11 inches tall. Of course, your height won't actually be changing. In reality, your mind will change so that things that are taller than you are will seem really tall while things that are only as tall or shorter than you, including yourself, will seem really small, creating the illusion of being really short. However, you will be completely unaware of this. Also, despite the fact that you will act as if you were the height that you were before the transformation began, you will believe that you are only 3 feet and 11 inches tall despite anything that seems to indicate that this is not the case. Then, feel a relaxing tingling sensation start at your feet and then move up your body as a short and soft coat of thick and luxurious fur starts to grow, consuming any hair that you have as it does so. The fur on your feet and lower legs, as well as on the bottom third of your upper legs, is black while the space from that part of your upper legs to half an inch below your waist has blue fur on it. However, some of the fur that would otherwise be blue is black due to the band of black fur that is half as tall as the distance from your waist to the bottom of the front of your torso. The top of this band of black fur is level with your waist, but it curves down a bit on the front and back sides of your torso so that by the time it crosses the center of the front and back sides of your torso the top of it is level with where the bottom of it was before it started to curve downwards. Also, it curves upwards a bit on both sides right before it crosses the centers so that it forms a continuous curve. Additionally, the fur on the rest of your torso is light yellow, except for that which grows on the part of your shoulders that extends past the sides of the rest of your torso that fur is black. Also, the yellow fur that grows around your neck is three times as long as the rest of your fur and grows in the shapes of spikes that point away from your neck and are rotated slightly up or down or somewhere in between. The fur on most of your arms is blue, but there are four triangular shaped sections of black fur on them. The bases of each of these triangular sections of black fur are on each side of your wrists, and cover those sides of them entirely. The ones on the top and bottom of your arms are tall enough that their points are three-fourths of the way up your lower arms, while the ones on the left and right sides are only one-fourth as tall as the other ones. Like the triangles of black fur on your wrists, the fur on your hands is black. The fur on your neck, as well as on most of your head and ears, is blue. However, there is a black band of fur that goes around your head. This band of fur is as tall as your nose and vertically centered on it in the front and gets taller the further back it goes so that by the time it reaches the back of your head, the bottom of the band of fur is at the same height that it was on the front of your head but the top of it goes to the top of the back of your head. Also, there is a black strip of fur that starts at your nose and is as wide as it. It goes straight back over the top of your head until it reaches the other side of the black band of fur. Additionally, there is black fur on the inside of your ears. As the fur grows you might touch it and notice just how soft it is, as well as how it offers little enough resistance to allow you to run your hands, or as they will soon be paws, through it with ease. Next, feel a pleasant pulling sensation at the base of your spine as a tail starts to grow. This tail is covered in the same luxurious blue fur as your arms, and is as long as your torso, head and neck are combined. The tail starts out half as wide as your hands are and then gradually gets larger until it is as wide as your hands are 6 inches away from the end of it. At that point, your tail quickly curves downwards 90 degrees and starts to gradually get smaller until it ends in a furry point. Although you will be able to control your new tail which has great flexibility, you will never be able to fully straighten out the part of your tail that gets smaller. Then, a somehow enjoyable numbness spreads over your finger and toenails. Once this has happened, they disappear, being replaced by skin covered in your wonderful black fur. 
Now start to feel the wonderful and satisfying sensations of your body stretching and compressing for this part of the transformation as the part of your upper legs that are covered in blue fur are becoming wider and longer until they are twice as large as they were before while their height stays as it was. As this happens your neck and arms, as well as your torso from the waist up, shrink until they are half as wide and long as they were before, and while your hands stay the same size, the parts of your shoulders that extend past the sides of the rest of your torso become equally longer and taller so that they are one-third as tall as your torso is. Also, your shoulders will no longer be able to rotate, but this inability won't restrict your movement at all, and you will never find this weird or unusual and you will never be able to understand any logic when it is applied in a way that directly suggests that this inability should restrict your movement. Additionally, the left and right sides of the extended sections of your shoulders are completely flat, making it look as if the extensions are two rings that are completely covered in black fur and that fit your old human shoulders perfectly. In addition, your upper legs and the bottom half of your torso have changed size in such a way that they form a shape similar to that of the lower half of an hourglass, with the part of your upper legs that are covered in fur being the wide part of it while the middle of your torso is the narrow part. Moreover, the top third of your torso stretches forwards so that it is 25% longer than the rest of your torso, and it gradually goes from being its normal length to being 25% longer over the course of the inch below the top third of your torso, a curve at the top and bottom of that area seamlessly connecting the longer part of your torso to the rest of your torso. Next, feel a weak and enjoyable stretching sensation on the underside of each of your toes as well as on the underside of your heels in a circular area that is centered on your heels and half as wide as them as the fur falls out in all of those areas. As the fur falls out and then quickly fades away, it is revealed that the skin on those sections of your feet have swelled slightly and become a pink material that is slightly squishy. After that, feel the pleasant sensations of your toes and fingers merging and changing shape so that you have three toes on each of your feet and three fingers on each of your hands. Each of your new toes are as long as your middle toes used to be and are one-third as wide as your feet are and are now composed of one highly flexible segment instead of three rigid ones. Also, each of your fingers are as long as your middle fingers used to be and now only have one highly flexible segment instead of three rigid ones, and are one-third as wide as your hands are, or more accurately, your new four paws. Of course, you won't actually have three fingers on each of your four paws, and you will use your hands as you normally would, but you will be completely unaware of this and only be able to perceive your four paws as having three fingers on them. Also, you will never find it weird or unusual that despite only having three fingers on your four paws, you act as if you have five fingers, and you will be incapable of understanding any logic when it is applied in a way that directly suggests that you should only have the capabilities of something with three fingers instead of something with five fingers. Next. Feel the pleasant sensations of your wrists, as well as your lower arms from your wrists to three-fourths of the way up them, becoming as wide as your four paws are. Also, the last fourth of your lower arms gradually gets wider starting at where they connect to the rest of your arms and ending where they reach the wider part of your lower arms, being just as wide as them at that point. Then, you feel a satisfying stretching sensation as your toes bend upwards so that there is a 45 degree angle between your toes and the rest of your hind paws. Immediately after this happens your toes lock in place, forcing you to walk on your toes, or walk digitigrade as it is called when it is not done by a human, a creature that is becoming a less and less accurate description of what you are. After your toes have undergone this change, the rest of your feet, or more accurately your hind paws, start to lengthen. As this happens your lower legs become shorter at an equal rate until your hind paws are almost as long as your lower legs were not counting your toes, resulting in your lower legs only being a few inches long. The result of this is that when standing up straight, your upper legs are angled 45 degrees downwards and point forwards, your lower legs are angled 45 degrees downwards and point backwards, not counting your toes your hind paws are angled 45 degrees downwards and point forwards and all of your weight rests on your toes which are flat. Having this leg structure will feel completely natural to you because it is the leg structure of a Lucario, the Pokemon that you are becoming. Of course, your lower legs, toes, and the rest of your hind paws won't actually change so that you walk digitigrade and have the appropriate leg structure, 
and you will do things like walking and running and standing like you would if you were a human, but you will be completely incapable of perceiving this and only be able to perceive yourself as having that digitigrade leg structure and hind paws. Also, you will be completely incapable of understanding any logic when it is applied in a way that directly suggests that you are not moving or standing as you would if you had hind paws and legs designed for walking digitigrade. Now feel a satisfying pulling sensation on the middle of the top of your four paws, as well as on a spot located halfway across and three-fourths of the way up your torso as spikes painlessly emerge from your skin and fur. They are each half as wide as your four paws are and are one-third as tall as your torso is, as well as end in a dangerously sharp point. Despite the fact that they are made of an organic version of steel, they are not cold. Also, because they are an extension of your mind and not real, you will never try to use these spikes to do anything, especially not combat. However, you will be completely unaware of this and just think that using your spikes to do things is completely absurd, not being able to understand any logic when it is applied in a way that would suggest that this is not the case. Additionally, these spikes will not form if the phrase that has no spikes is added after the trigger phrase. After that, feel the nice pulling sensation of some of the fur on the back of your head growing. This happens in two spots on the back of your head that are half as wide as your four paws are. These spots are located halfway up the back of your head, with one of them being one-fourth of the way to the left of the back of your head while the other is one-fourth of the way to the right of it. At each of these spots, the fur extends to form two masses of fur that start in the same place, but almost immediately grow to the left and right so that they overlap minimally. They are as long as your lower arms are and gradually get wider until they are one-fourth as wide as your head is right before the end of them where they end in a wide rounded point. These masses of fur can be moved as if they were one flexible object, but the fur that makes them up cannot be separated. Then, you feel the pleasant sensation of your ears moving to the top of your head. As this happens, they change shape so that they are shaped like hollow cones that have been cut in half and that are so wide that one side of each of them just barely doesn't touch the band of black fur that goes around your head while the other side of each of them just barely doesn't touch the stripe of black fur that goes over your head. Also, the inside of your new ears are flat instead of rounded, with the sides of the insides of them being covered in blue fur while the back of the insides of them are covered in black fur. Additionally, there is a section of blue fur on the back of the inside of your ears. It is located at the bottom of them and is shaped and orientated just like the black fur on them, but is only one-fourth as tall as them. Because of how big your ears are your hearing will be much stronger and you will find that sounds that didn't bother you before might now be overwhelming because of how much louder they sound to you if you aren't used to having a form with hearing superior to that of a human. If that is the case, it won't take you long to get used to your improved hearing and to be able to deal with sounds that you previously could deal with again. Of course, your hearing won't actually become stronger, but your expectations about how loud sounds are will be greatly reduced to make it seem like they are, and your tolerance for loud noises will be reduced accordingly, but you will be completely unaware of the fact that this is happening. Next. Feel yet another satisfying pulling sensation as your chin, mouth and the bottom half of your nose stretch out to form a medium length muzzle, causing the band of black fur that goes around your head to be stretched out as well. As the muzzle forms your nose holes disappear, but you will find that you can breathe through the front of your muzzle as if it were your nose. The muzzle forms in such a way that the front of it is shaped like a triangle that points straight down and that is twice as tall and wide as your nose holes were. The fur on your muzzle that is above the bottom half of the triangle is black, and all of the fur on your muzzle that is below the top half of the triangle is blue, but all of the fur on the triangle itself is black. As this happens your lips disappear and the fur on your nose falls out and quickly fades away to reveal that it has become triangular and is now made of a black version of the slightly squishy material that makes up your pink paw pads. Now your pupils are becoming narrow like those of a snake and your eyes are stretching out in both directions so that they are twice as long as they were before. Then, skin covered in black fur covers the top half of your eyes. After that, your eyes and the furry skin that covers them rotate down 30 degrees. Next, your irises and pupils stretch equally in both directions so that they are twice as tall as they had been. Somehow, even after all of these changes, your vision is just as good as it was before you started to transform. After all of those changes to your eyes have finished, 
your irises become a vibrant shade of red. As this happens you undergo several mental changes. The first change is that you will believe that you can see auras. This will be because when you look at someone and focus on them, they will appear to glow with a light that only illuminates them. The color of this light, this person's aura, will be determined by what your subconscious thinks their disposition is. You will know that what you perceive as the person's aura might be inaccurate, but you will never find this unusual or understand any logic when it is used in a way that would suggest otherwise. Also, if you focus on where you are when you cannot see, for example if you close your eyes or are blindfolded, you will see your surroundings. In reality your subconscious mind will attempt to reconstruct a mental version of your surroundings based on what you remember and any other methods that it can use to determine what they are like without doing anything with your body. When you rely on this form of sight, you will always be very careful because you know that it can be very inaccurate, even to a potentially dangerous degree. You will believe that any visual inaccuracy will be due to the nature of auras. Like with seeing people's auras, you will fail to understand any logic that would suggest that this should not be the case. Additionally, you will be completely unaware of the fact that these aura-related abilities are caused by your subconscious and believe that you actually can sense auras. The second mental change will affect how you perceive the effects of this trigger, and your conscious mind will be completely unaware of this. What will happen will be that when the effects of this trigger are active, you will believe that and act as if you are experiencing them fully and perfectly. So regardless of whether or not your mind makes you feel fur when you touch yourself, you will act as if you did and believe that you did, being completely unaware that that is not what you experienced. Also, your memories of the time when this trigger is active will be altered to match your altered experiences. However, your memories will only be altered when this trigger is active and only the ones that are formed while this trigger is active will be altered, and never any other ones. The third and final mental change is that when you go to sleep at the time that you normally would, you will instantly fall asleep and start to dream. In those dreams, you will be a Lucario in the world of Pokemon that is being trained to be, and eventually will become, an Aura Guardian by a human as their apprentice. An Aura Guardian is any creature, human or otherwise, that can control and utilize auras and does good deeds. Over time your bond and loyalty with this human will grow and you will become good friends, continuing to work and fight alongside them even once you have completed your apprenticeship. As a Lucario, one of your abilities will be to speak telepathically. This dream world will be consistent, ensuring that no time passes and that nothing changes within it between when you wake up and when you next go to sleep. Also, when you do eventually wake up you will remember your time in that world fully, and find that the thought of it always makes you happy because being in it is always a pleasant experience overall, and that not being in it never causes you to feel any negative emotions. Finally, the effects of this hypnosis file will become inactive if they are a risk to your physical body or your well-being, if they are a risk to your social or professional life, if there is an emergency that they would prevent you from dealing with to the best of your abilities or if they are a risk to your mental health. Also, any effect of this hypnosis file that was an issue will become active again once it no longer will be one. Additionally, you will never find this hypnosis file or the effects of it even slightly addictive. Now you have undergone this transformation and are a Lucario. I hope that you enjoyed the transformation and find your new form to be absolutely wonderful. This session is almost over, so goodbye, my soft furry friend.